thoughts come to us from every side. Read Reda. I am Dr. Leigh Bhatshi, Professor of HOD of Medicine. Today we will be seeing a case of gastrointestinal system. A patient by name, age 50 years, occupation by Kooli, resident of Othalur Ottipalli, Kadapa district, belongs to low socio-economic status, came to hospital with the chief complaint of distension of abdomen for the past two weeks, swelling of both lower limbs for the past two weeks, breathlessness for the past eight days. History of present illness. Present illness started as abdominal distension for the past two weeks, which is insidious in onset, gradually progressive, which is initially small to start with, uniformly distended and attain present size. It is associated with pain and fever. Pain for the past two weeks which is incidence in onset, all over the abdomen, dull aching type of pain, no aggravating factors, temporarily relieved by taking medication. Fe associated with fever, fever, hydrate fever, continuous, internal, associated with chills and dry cough, no diagonal variation, relieved by taking, temporarily relieved by taking medication, and again appears. So what are the causes of uh, pain and fever in the case of distant One we have to suspect SPP, spontaneous pyperitis. Anything else? Or sometimes this may be superadenitis, some tuberculous peritonitis. Or it may be tuberculous peritonitis, or it may be superadded to the previous ascites. Or there may be an onset of the malignancy. Malignancy. So maybe have to the cars from now get the malignant ascites. So these are the three things which you have to suspect whenever there is a fever and the pain. pain. The swelling of both the limbs in the past two weeks, incidence in onset, initially confined to food and gradually progress to life, no great factors, relieved by taking medication. But it is now it is up to the level of sleep, no diagonal variations. Breathlessness back for the past eight days, incidence in onset, so this type of uh, swelling of the abdomen and lower limbs uh, indicates what could be the underlying uh, pathology. You start with the swelling in the abdomen, then progressing to the lower limbs uh, indicates most likely it is a chronic liver disease. Chronic liver disease. So whenever there is a distension of abdomen followed by swelling of the lower limbs, I have to think that it could be a chronic liver pathology. This is unique for the liver. Okay, the otherwise, we know that when there is a swelling in the lower limbs, it start with it is a dependent edema. And then gradually involving the other parts of the body, finally resulting in a sulfur, goes in favor of and is to cardiac failure. On the other hand, if there is a swelling in the face, then spreading to the other parts of the body indicates renal yeah. pathology. So, there could be renal failure or chronic renal failure, it could be nephritis or chronic what you call it, nephrotic syndrome, whatever renal pathology, the evolution of the cell will be like that. So, by listening to the evolution of the edema or the swelling, you can say what would be the underlying disease, most likely probability, there may be exceptions. Breathlessness for the past eight days, incidence in onset, initially grateful and progress to great pain. Admitted on the moving work, relieved by taking rest, no history of autonomia and no history of PMB. History of sleep disturbances and loss of appetite from two weeks. Sleep disturbance. Sleep disturbance. Is it only a disturbance or a rhythm variation? Sleep rhythm variation usually goes in favor of early and developing. Find out what is the fact. No history of vomiting, no history of tivitis, no history of amyloidosis, no history of blood and stools, no history of allergic discoloration of eyes, no history of cough, chest pain, palpitations, 
how much of zero color lines, how much of decreased human output and facial puffiness. Do I want to ask the hematomesis and bilirubin in this case? So any GI grid, whether it is the hematomesis or bilirubin, or sometimes there could be lower GI bleed also in the form of food. Maybe a fresh bleed is because of the hemorrhoids. hemorrhoids. So it can be fresh bleed from the rectum or it can be altered blood. So called tar like stones. So tar like stones indicates the upper GI bleed. Fresh blood indicates the lower GIT bleed. So what is the cutoff point to say upper GI bleed and lower GI bleed? Ligamental bleed. So where it is situated? Duodenal jejunal junction. So the bleed that comes from that point above is upper GI bleed. The one that comes below is lower GI bleed. So in a chronic liver disease, both could be possible. So it can be upper GI bleed. What is the cost of the upper GI bleed in these cases? So viruses rupture can be there. There is one reason, main reason. Any other reasons? Total hyper hyper tension can give give rise to portal gastropathy. Portal gastropathy. Or sometimes there may be erosive gastritis. Or the chronic liver patients are more likely to have neuronal ulcers. So there may be bleeding peptic ulcer, there may be multiple erosive gastritis or there can be portal gastropathy in addition to the virus structure. Okay, so there are all the things that can give rise to double GA bleed. Yes. The past in this, history of similar complaints in the past, admit, uh, one year back, admitted in limbs, Karipa hospital for 10 days, parasynthesis was done and taken treatment. The symptoms were subsided and discharged from hospital. History of jaundice present 10 years back, lasted for 15 days, taken native medication. Not a known diabetic, hypertension, no history of TB, epilepsy, asthma, coronary artery diseases, no history of blood transfusions, no history of lethal vaccinations, no history of traveling, no history of IV drug abuse. In the past history, so one is uh, the very important thing is uh, viral infections. 10 years back once it's a significant history. So whether it had a jaundice and whether this jaundice would be because of the hepatitis. So I can ask what was the symptoms at the time of presentation. So any viral problem, whether it had a jaundice, how long it lasted. So in general, to produce a disease like this, the viral infections most commonly, one is hepatitis B, the other one is hepatitis C. So any workup has been done in the previous uh, episodes of journeys, if any documentation is there, it's worth uh, enquiring it and take a note of it. Okay, B and C, this is very important. So for that reason, was there any history of hepatitis number one? Second thing is uh, alcohol consumption. So there is a chronic alcohol intake or even occasional alcohol is also provided there is some genetic predisposition can be toxic and it can initiate the events. And ultimately, the patient can go for it to chronic liver disease. So, some people will be telling that this is an occasional alcoholic, you know, they are also likely to produce, provided there is a genetic predisposition. So, alcohol is in form of chronic usage or even occasional alcohol, it's also a significant physiological factor that we to inquire. And third thing is, uh, they are telling. Blood transfusions, uh, any serological products administration, IV drug abuse, tattooing, these are all good source of transmitting infections, again, especially with B or even C. So, for that reason, we have to find out these things. And another important thing is any chronic drug usage. Chronic drug usage, especially drugs that are hepatotoxic, chronic usage, not acute. When many of the drugs will produce acute uh, toxicity of the liver. Once you stop the drugs, uh, that also will recover. So, for example, uh, anti epileptic drugs, uh, anti tuberculosis drugs, uh, they are also toxic, but once you stop the drug, the patient will recover. So, in this case, to produce a chronic disease, what are the drugs that are incriminated? 
our patient has been using, say for example, methotrexate. So methotrexate is being used liberally for so many other medical conditions. So he has his rheumatoid arthritis, not even more pregnancy. So wide usage of the drug is there, so that any chronic use of this drug can produce the silent fibrosis of the liver that can result in cirrhosis or immediate effect. So like that, any significant drugs like anabolic steroids, oral contraceptives, heavy metals, mushrooms, like that so many drugs can produce, even INH among the antibiotics drugs is incriminated in the ether pathogenesis of cirrhosis. So, Prolonged use of the drugs also we should find out in the past history. So these are the four important things which you have to remember when you are taking the past illness. Personal history, basically fish tablet and also take sandwich once in a week. Sleep sleep is of present, loss of appetite, bowel have you said disturb, bladder have you said disturb, habitual to alcohol consumption for the past 22 years, type of alcohol is whiskey, 360 ml per day. Family history, no history of single companies in the family. Treatment history, previous treatment records are not present. Present present uh, treatment, tablet Arbel Acron 150 mg, OD, injection LASIK 40 mg, IV, BD, salt and water restriction diet, serum lactulose 30 mg. General examination, patient is conscious, coconut and Why is uh, lactulose? We suspect any early encephalopathy is so prophylactically we can give so that you do not go into over encephalopathy. But at the same time, we are telling that the diabetics are given arlactone and uh, crucimide are given. So I don't know why this, you know, both are given here. Because the diabetics in encephalopathy is likely to precipitate encephalopathy. Precipitates. Any sedatives, especially benzodiazepines, commonly are used in different electrolyte disturbance, dehydration, diabetics, high protein diet, GA bleed. So they are all likely to produce encephalopathy, even parasynthesis, all aggravating factors. So on um, one side we are giving the diabetics here, on the other hand, they are giving the lactose. So we have to balance it. Because there are precipitating factors here and there, and then prophetic, lactically, we are giving you lactose as well. So, what's your history diagnosis here? Chronic liver disease. We were putting the type of no, liver disease. Cirrhosis. Cirrhosis. Chronic liver disease, probably cirrhosis. Okay, so chronic liver disease is not a single entity. So, it can be cirrhosis, it can be chronic active hepatitis or chronic persistent hepatitis. When you say it is a chronic, what chronic disease we are entertaining here, you should specify. So in fact, it is a histological diagnosis so that we differentiate from the, one from the other. But cirrhosis can be diagnosed clinically based on certain physical findings. So, if there are some findings in favor or the history suggestive of Cirrhosis, you can make out clinically. You can say chronic liver disease, probably cirrhosis. So, again, chronic means you should remember that the duration of the illness is well. So, it must be the symptomatology pertaining to the liver for more than six months. Six months. So, that is again important. So, less than seven days or one week is acute, hyper acute. Up to four weeks is acute. Up to 12 weeks is sub acute. More than 12, we can say chronic liver disease. Okay. So, by the history, it is a chronic liver disease, probably cirrhosis. So, with the RSC, maybe alcohol. Okay. Patient is conscious, cognitive cooperation, probably with the moderation. BMI is 22.7 kg per no cytosis, no clapping, no jaundice. No lymphadenopathy. Fetal edema is present, extending up, extending up to me, bilateral and picking type, hypopigmented, hypopigmented patch present to more than the situation. No signs of reversal failure. So, what signs do we have looked for then to say that there is no reversal failure? Under the issue of the most important part of the fact, the liberal 
another place. Spider needle, armor empty food, endocrine contraction, gynecomastia, testicular atrophy. Did you smell? Yes. Is it here? Fetal hepaticus is not there. Mm. Asterix is there. Mm. Mm. What are the signs that you look at the form? Mm. Trauma, eczema, dependence, and fracture, clubbing, lipolytia. Sometimes it may be gooey also on hands. Even cyanosis can be present. So, any of these things are present. The clubbing in which cirrhosis, the clubbing is common. Primary bilirubin cirrhosis. Primary bilirubin cirrhosis. So, you don't find any evidence for the liver cell failure in this case. But it shows. Huh? Again, the face is here. This is the interest. That is very, very important thing which I had to look for. In the actuality, so I had to say the pulver part of the conjunctiva. Is it not? So, I know, Opati, we have to use the right now. One is the interest. Anchor. Factual. Factual. Palaranda. Tharavata. Jantilasma. Yes. Around the cornea, sometimes if you suspect any patient, hair for rings. Early young patients, young patients, hair for rings. Sometimes in malnutrition, there may be even bitter spots. These are all things that would be possible. Then, how is the face? Pigmentation. So, what is cirrhotic phases? Hmm? Usually, eyes are sunken, is it? The malar, hmm? malar prominence will be hmm? there, arched lips, muddy, complexion of hmm? the face, and there can be even, uh, see, what is this? What you look for here? Hmm? Territory gland, it is an enlargement, sometimes even the lacrimal glands also may be enlarged. So, territory gland enlargement, where do you see commonly? Alcoholic. Alcoholic. Okay. okay. So, there is no ictus here as such, the face, even see, they typically, so there is emaciation of the upper part of the body. The trunk is emaciated, upper limbs is emaciated, the face is also emaciated. The only thing is the abdomen is distended, the lower limbs are having swelling. The other thing, and actually in this patient, you know, the jugulars are also increased. So there is a rise of JVP, which is it is going behind the ear lobule. So, rise of the JVP indicates uh, you are telling breathlessness, uh, is it uh, pedal edema is there, is it heart failure? So, any fluid overload can give rise to JVP. Hmm? It doesn't mean that patient is having heart failure. But uh, having a uh, make out, uh, made out of that finding, you uh, have to keep in mind whether there are other signs of your heart failure are there or not. You can look for those things. So, form our signs. Uh, hmm? Examination and then branding. It. Hmm? See, there is a branding here. Then, examination, and this also should tell. Lines are pale. Is it not? Hmm? So, the mild clubbing is not. The clubbing is not. The clubbing is not. The clubbing is not. So, outstretched hand, the dorsiflexion of the wrist. I hmm? had to see. Asterix is okay. So, if it is present, uh, how it looks like uh, forward jerky movements of a 3 to 5 of HZ, 3 to 5 HZ, that is the frequency. A 3 to 5 jerky movements, forward movements, you can see. Mm -hmm. Is it a specific for the encephalopathy, liver? Hepatic encephalopathy specific sign, is it specific or can you see the liver flap otherwise called? 
Where do you see? Other than hepatic encephalopathy. So renal failure can give rise. Respiratory failure, carbon dioxide holes or can give rise. Even it can it is disturbed in Wilson's disease also. Imagine many of the drugs also can produce it, including phenytoin toxicity. So it's not specific for your encephalopathy. What else? Is over. Mm -hmm. is over. So, focus on the over. So, face is emaciated here. You said in the general examination, the malnutrition, the moderate equipment, the moderate inflammation, so everything, any patient you will tell the same thing. You know? Here is this muscle mass is loss indicating protein malnutrition. Protein malnutrition. Okay. So there can be pallor, there can be vitamin deficiencies. So what is this? See? Canical. Canical? Yeah. Is it not a sign of uh, liver cell failure? Huh? So Spider angiomas. The distinction of the abdomen is cause is ascites. So ascites uh, is a sign of what? So it can be a sign of low cell failure or it can be a sign of portal hypertension. So it is not correct to say even all other signs are absent if the ascites is there, still you have to keep open the possibility of a liver cell failure producing the ascites. So in fact the only ascites which is present means still you have to think of whether it could be a liver failure. Even in the uh, genitalia path, we have to look for the, is there any hernias or like, is there any testicular atrophy or even a scrotal edema or can be hydrocele. So, genitalia examination is also a must in this case. Vital data, sir. Thursday, 76 beats per minute. Even in general examination, sometimes there will be scratch marks. Because of the itching, because of the jaundice, you know, polystasis can be there that can give a sporadic and scratch marks can be found over the body. Yes. Vital data set. Fans rate 76 beats per minute, regular, normal volume, no special characters, no vessel for thickening, no radio radial and radio femoral delay, all ventral pulses are felt, blood pressure 120 by 90 mm of HC, recorded in a right arm in supine position. Respiratory rate 17, 17 cycles per minute, regular abdominal velocity, temperature 98.4 degree, degree Fahrenheit. Systemic examination, inspection, oral therapy. Systemic examination not for gastrointestinal system. Say like that. Yes. Systemic examination of gastrointestinal system, on inspection, oral therapy, lips are dark colored, teeth are normal, oral hygiene good. Consider for some organ. Abdomen examination. Abdomen is uniformly distended. Lines are full. Umbilicus is midline in position. All coordinates are moving equally with respiration. Skin over the abdomen is shiny and stretched. Engorged means present over the abdomen. No scars, sinuses, visible pulsations, visible peristalsis. External genitalia, external genitalia are normal. Hemial sites are free. Pulsation. More of temperature and tenderness, could not be made. Especially the skin, where there is a distension, the thin down will be shiny. There is a description for that also. Paper, money, like skin. Paper, money, like skin. Yes. Albonavagali could not be made out even by dipping method because of fluid accumulation. Fluid through present cell, abdominal gut, 101 centimeters. Distance between Jiffy syndrome to umbilicus is 28 cm, umbilicus to pubic surface is 18 cm, umbilicus to right anterior superior relax spine, to left anterior superior relax spine, 22 cm. So, whenever there is a distension, you so have to take different measurements in the total depth and the upper segment to give the umbilicus to the Jiffy sternum, umbilicus to the symphysis pubis, anterior superior relax spine to umbilicus on either side. So all these measurements are taken, 
comes to progress, you monitor the progress. Suppose today I have taken total curve, serially or recording like that, so you know whether the patient is responding to your treatment, whether he is improving or not, or whether he is deteriorating. That is number one. Second thing is by taking different measurements, you can have an idea what is the source of the swelling in here, where from the origin. So, for example, in ascites, you will have this upper part more than compared to the lower segment here. Or suppose that there is a pelvic mass arising, say, over in tumor on one side, this uh, spinal umbilical measured may be different from the other side. Or suppose that something is arising from the pelvis, fibroid citrus, or a bladder related swelling. So, then you will have that the lower part will be more. So, that is the purpose of taking these measurements. So whether it is simple fluid or any organ of megaly or some organ pathology is arising. So you can make out by taking these measurements. That is the purpose of it. Yes. Parkashan sir, are there percussion? Okay, the palpation, palpation. You said there is a fluid thrill is present. Okay. But did you see that uh, venous flow? Because there is quite visible uh, veins are present over the abdomen. So, did you verify the flow in these vessels? Because that is one of the very important signs to make for total hypertension. Dilated vessels, veins over the abdomen, where the flow is away from the abdomen. So, veins may be distended in three different conditions. It can be superior vena cava obstruction, inferior vena cava obstruction, or it can be portal hypertension. So, the flow is a must to verify to know whether it is because of the portal hypertension or it is something else. So, I have to demonstrate the flow whether it is away from the umbilicus. The classical description of caput medusae may not be present in every patient, but you can have a vessels like this where you have to see the flow. Is very very important. So you know how to milking it huh? and to see huh? that they have came to. So how much time it has taken for filling from here you see. So there is a rapid filling from below upwards. So like that in different angles, you know, different sides you can verify. So whether the flow is away from the umbilicus or towards the umbilicus. So the fact is the normal distribution of the veins also away from the umbilicus. It is only an exaggerated phenomena in the portal hypertension. Some people may ask you what is the normal distribution of veins. It will be away from the umbilicus only. Right? So when you are looking for the veins, always make it a point to keep the patient erect. Sometimes in the lying posture or in the sitting posture, it may not be prominent. So, when you are not able to find out the, the distinctive veins over the abdomen, make the patient erect, make an attempt to look for the veins. So, without making the patient erect, don't make a comment that the veins are not visible or not, the flow is not able to measure. 